I'm Pete Devine. I'm the Education Coordinator for the Yosemite Association here in Yosemite National Park on a uh, nice wintry day with snowfall. Uh, I can hear Yosemite Falls in the background just off to my right and the Merced River very popular with many people in the summertime is a great place to, uh, to splash and play and float on a raft. But right now it looks more like part of an Ansel Adams photograph where our winter world of Yosemite is done in black and white. Very different from the summertime. We just come here every year. We have a couple snow fights. We go down the hill a couple times. And <coughs> it's just fun. I just go fast, man. I just go like zoom. You see the cars come up and they're loaded with sleds and the kids have their snow suits on and their snow boots and they're so excited to just come and see snow. And for a lot of people that come up here, this is their first time ever seeing snow. And so it's great to have those people into the park um, when they're prepared to drive in the snowy mountains. You know, cars slide around out here and that's what we're trying to prevent with the chains. So we're en route to Badger Pass Ski Area, which is a downhill ski area within Yosemite National Park. And so this is the road in the wintertime where I get called to respond to the majority of motor vehicle collisions. Today we're expecting four go, to seven inches of snow. And uh, tomorrow morning, two to three feet of snow above 6,000 feet. So we're expecting to see a significant amount of snowfall. People are on vacation. They've had these vacations planned for months. And uh, especially when one of their goals is to go skiing in Yosemite, they tend to come whether the roads are good or bad. We're at uh, Badger Pass Ski Area, the oldest ski area in the state of California. And uh, we're heading up the lift right now to go check out the snow. When you see people come up who've never seen snow before and they get up here and there's snow caked on all the trees like we have right now, there's just some, something about that that moves people and changes something inside them. I know, you know, snow's been a major part of my life since I grew up here. Grew up, learned to ski at Badger Pass when I was five and have been here ever since. And um, yeah, this place is just, it rules when there's snow on it. We can get amazing amounts of snow overnight. Uh, it wouldn't be uncommon to have uh, two to four feet of snow fall in uh, a 24-hour time period. So that's one of the great things about this year. We do get a lot, of, a lot of snow, but we also get great weather following it. As today is a great example, only two days ago we had one and a half to two feet of snow, and now today is a perfect warm spring day here in the Sierras. We get all our precipitation in the winter, virtually all of it. Summer is dry for five or six months. What allows agriculture to go on, what allows the wildlife to survive, what allows people to get a continuous water supply is the fact that that water slowly melts off the mountains and gets down to the farms and the cities. And winters when we only get a few of those storms, it's gonna be a dry summer. Uh, it's gonna be tough on the farmers and years when we, we get a lot of those storms, then we're, we're fat, we're better off. So what that means is our entire snowpack might consist of three to five storms in a winter. And so the difference of one storm or not uh, makes a significant difference in the available snowpack uh, for all the processes that depend on it. The Sierra Nevada supplies 50% of California's water supply. And therefore, the state has made a considerable investment in tracking the snowpack in the Sierra Nevada. We may have a 20-foot snowpack or 30-foot snowpack in some parts of the Sierra. And not only is it amazingly deep, but it's amazingly wet. So in a, in a wet year, we may have 10 feet of water sitting on the ground in the snowpack, which when you multiply that over the entire range is an enormous amount of water. And 90. Excellent. So the main thing we're interested in here is how much water is in the snowpack. 
And the way we find that out is to weigh it. And uh, this tube is cleverly calibrated, so we don't have to do any math to do that. Folks who are operating the dams use this data to determine how they're going to manage their dam. If they know how much water is going to be coming later in the year, they can make better decisions about how much water released now versus later. Uh, it's used legally to divide up the water. How much water are the salmon going to get? How much water are the farmers going to get? How much water are the cities going to get? That's based in part on these measurements. These records we're, we're collecting out here, this data is being used in part to see how the climate's changing. And in fact, we can now see that the snowpack is melting off earlier in the year. We're not getting as much snow lower down that is forecast to continue. And if it does continue, the state is gonna be in worse and worse shape because essentially the size of this reservoir is shrinking. And the length of time that it, this reservoir is holding the water is getting shorter and shorter. Last year, we were at about the same level of, of snowpack and we had a historically dry year, the, one of the, the driest springs on record because snow basically stopped. And so what we're waiting for right now is we're at the same critical juncture. Will we get more snow after this point or not? And that will determine uh, what this water year is like for the state of California. Think about most of the people who are here in California, they live uh, down around sea level. So for them, uh, the whole idea of snow, it's just something so foreign to them. And they do, they get up here and they get all giddy. And the first thing they want to do is pack a snowball together and throw at their friend and then they want to build a snowman and, and then the next step is to, uh, well, we can slide on this, how about we go tubing or go skiing or snowboarding. So, you know, just for a lot of people it is just a novelty. I enjoy the, the freedom of getting around on a winter landscape, particularly with skis. In the forest, there's a lot of down trees. It's often difficult to go cross country. And that changes completely in the winter. A lot of the magic for me of the winter time is just how amazing it is to slide down hills, being able to control yourself, get where you're going, but just have a blast while you're doing it. It's a great way to travel through the woods. We do a snow survey in the north end of the park. It takes four days. We ski and hike up close to 50 miles. I've done that survey a whole lot of times and we've never seen a visitor out there. We've got the place to ourselves and it's gorgeous. It's like another Yosemite. There's Yosemite and then there's Yosemite in winter. It's a different national park and a different experience to get out and explore it in the snow. Wet weather to return to the central California interior by this weekend. A pair of Pacific weather systems will arrive late this week. The first will move into central California Thursday night with periods of rain developing, continuing into Friday. A typical winter pattern in California is that we'll see anywhere from four to seven major storms. That's a typical winter weather pattern. You know, we've uh, been under a ridge of high pressure here for the past, you know, few days and it's been warm and, you know, uh, almost borderline spring-like conditions and so now the uh, cold air is reloading out over the, the, the eastern Pacific and it's going to bring another big system. So we'll see uh, temperatures coming back down and uh, snow levels dropping. If you're going to be out there Friday, you're going to be getting wet. Now the question is, is it going to be rain or is it going to be snow? So we come back over here and we take a look. It says here around 4,800 feet we're expecting snow. For points 4,800 feet and above we're expecting snow. So here we are, standing at the boundary of Yosemite National Park. We've got the Merced River flowing down here next to us, and on the other side, Highway 140, and up the road is the Arch Rock Entrance Station. We've got some rain. It's the beginning of a big storm. It's supposed to rain and snow all day. And we've got a temperature of 46 degrees. And we are here at 2,126 feet. We've got a benchmark nearby that verifies that. So we're gonna head up the road and see where we can find rain turning to snow. In some strict terms, snow line is actually the elevation at which snow stays year round. And then you have a seasonal snow line and that's the line at which snow can be expected to be in the winter time. And then you have the snow line that can happen in a certain storm, which is extremely variable, 
over time and space in each individual storm. That transition is what we are chasing. We're trying to find out in this storm, on this day and this hour, where on this mountain is that transition happening. So here we are at Tunnel View Lookout, a very popular place to come and see an excellent view of the valley, which you can see here. It's about 4,400 feet in elevation and our thermometer said 37 degrees. So 37 degrees, it's getting colder and it's still raining. We seem to have found the lower end of the transition zone here. It's the very first sign of snow happening at 5,000 feet and it continues to transition just all around us right here. Here we are on Glacier Point Road, headed up towards Badger Pass. We're at about 6,200 feet in elevation and it's 30 degrees out and it's definitely snowing. It was an interesting experience driving up the road from 5,000 feet. Maybe at 5,800 feet was when we had like snow on the road and we needed to drive much differently and people were putting on chains. So it's interesting transition from 5,000 to 5,800 feet, I would say, it was the transition from where snow began to where it was full snowstorm. So the average snow line, to the best of our ability to estimate, is about 5,700 feet in Yosemite. If the snow line is at 5,700 feet, uh, that means snow is falling on approximately 90% of the park, and about 10% of the park is receiving rain. The park's topography is such that the majority of the landscape lies between seven and 9,000 feet, and right now all of that area receives snow during a typical storm. The snow line in the Sierra Nevada is really important for us to, to understand. Is it shifting? We need to know. There's some variability from year to year, just as there's variability from storm to storm. What we want to know is, is there a trend happening over many years where we're seeing it creep upward? And one of the concerns is, as the climate warms and that snow line goes up, a significant portion of the park will begin to receive rain rather than snow and that has a number of effects. If you get snow then it has a tendency to run off more slowly in the springtime as opposed to if you get a very heavy rain event at the higher elevations it's going to run off immediately. An extreme example are uh, what folks refer to as rain on snow events when the snow line will go all the way up to 10,000 feet and above and for a landscape like Yosemite that means 95 percent of the park is actually receiving rain and when that much area is receiving rain uh, at the intensity that we normally get which can be three to five inches in 24 hours uh, that's a significant amount of water and it's moving uh, rapidly uh, into the streams and down uh, into the main channels such as the Merced. On January 1, 1997, Yosemite National Park experienced its worst flood in 42 years. A forceful tropical storm dumped rain onto a deep snowpack, melting snow and sending torrents of water to the park's lower elevations. Roads were undercut by erosive currents, leaving asphalt surfaces with no support underneath. Thousands of feet of rock retaining wall and road shoulder were ripped away. In some places, entire sections of road were washed out. So if you look behind us, you see Pahono Bridge. In the 1997 flood, Pahono Bridge was completely covered in water. The Merced River here is currently at about 180 cubic feet per second. That's how much water is moving past any given point. That's the volume. 
Um, in the 1997 flood, it was t over 24,000 CFS. So for reference, this is 180, and that was 24,000. It was the biggest flood on record in Yosemite National Park on the Merced River. So here we are at Badger Pass, 7,200 feet, and it is 29 degrees is what our thermometer said. And um, it is snowing, there's no question. Constant, steady snowstorm happening all around us. This experiment can help us understand one of the main reasons why the ecosystems in the Sierra Nevada are so diverse. Because we have variable temperatures, we have this variation that's created just by a change in elevation, just by availability of water, just by temperature regime. How warm is it? How cold is it? It's interesting because I have studied snow and rain in the transition zone and tried to understand how those things are significant hydrologically, but I've never chased the snow line this way where I've actually taken a journey up the mountain to find out where is it actually happening today. So quantifying that has been really exciting. It's been very, very interesting. I'm Pete Devine, I'm the Education Coordinator for the Yosemite Association here in Yosemite National Park on a uh, nice wintry day with snowfall. Uh, you can hear Yosemite Falls in the background just off to my right and the Merced River, very popular with many people in the summertime, is a great place to, uh, to splash and play and float on a raft. But right now it looks more like part of an Ansel Adams photograph where our winter world of Yosemite is done in black and white, very different from the summertime. We're en route to Badger Pass Ski Area, which is a downhill ski area within Yosemite National Park. And so this is the road in the wintertime where I get called to respond to the majority of motor vehicle collisions. Today we're expecting four to seven inches of snow. And uh, tomorrow morning, two to three feet of snow, above 6,000 feet. So we're expecting to see a significant amount of snowfall. People are on vacation. They've had these vacations planned for months. People went to the park um, when they're prepared to drive in the snowy mountains. You know, cars slide around out here and that's what we're trying to prevent with the chains. We just come here every year. We have a couple snow fights. We go down the hill a couple times. And <coughs> it's just fun. I just go fast, man. I just go like zoom. You see the cars come up and they're loaded with sleds and the kids have their snow suits on and their snow boots and they're so excited to just come and see snow. And for a lot of people that come up here, this is our first time ever seeing snow. And so it's great to have those. And uh, especially when one of their goals is to go skiing in Yosemite. They tend to come whether the roads are good or bad. We're at uh, Badger Pass Ski Area, the oldest ski area in the state of California. And uh, we're heading up the lift right now to go check out the snow. When you see people come up who've never seen snow before and they get up here and there's snow caked on all the trees like we have right now. 